In this first video, we're going to discover how to use one of the available presets that Genoma offers for rigging, the hand rig preset. I've already loaded my mesh in Modeler. I'll add my Genoma presets in another layer, so to keep it separate from the mesh while editing it. Let's open the Genoma preset window and select one of the right hand presets. After hitting OK, We'll have our rig selected and ready to be resized and adapted to our mesh, using any tool we normally use for modeling. This is a huge advantage we get by editing Skelligon hierarchies in Modeler. We should of course keep the hand mesh visible in background to be used as reference. From the top view, let's move and resize the rig using the classic translate and scale tools. Then, in polygon mode, we can select the bones composing each finger and define the right position, scale and orientation for them, always using the translate, scale and rotate tools. We need to check how the preset is fitting the mesh in perspective. In this case, selecting the fingers and moving them on the y-axis is the next step to perform. Remember, you can constrain translation on just one axis using the control key. In the video, I'm using point selection instead of polygon, so I don't need to select the whole bone shapes using the lasso, but just the vertices belonging to them. After having checked that the position of the skeletons in the mesh is quite right, we have to copy paste the genoma rig in the same layer containing the mesh. Remember, you can only rig one layer at a time in Genoma. If your final model is composed of separated meshes that need separate rigs, you'll need multiple Genoma sessions, one for each mesh. Then, it will be possible to use load items from scene to merge all the rigged models in a single scene. Let's save the new one-layer object containing both the mesh and the rig information and send it to layout. Once in layout, with the model selected, we can click on Create Rig. In this case, the creation of the object is really super fast. For complex meshes and rigs, my advice is to set the viewport mode to bounding box before creating the rig. This will greatly speed up the recreation time. All the controls needed to animate the hand are automatically created by Genoma. Bones stay visible, in case the rigger needs to perform some further operation on the setup. Of course, it is possible to select all the bones at once and make them invisible using the scene editor. The finger controls in this case allow to rotate the base of the finger on heading and pitch using the left mouse button, while it's possible to bend the last two segments using the right one. In most cases, we can define the position and size of controls directly in Modeler, using the green boxes attached to the orientation arrow. Let's move them up and make them bigger. After saving the object, let's go back in Layout and this time click on Update Rig. Update Rig will destroy the previously created rig, updating it with the new changes. We can select the finger bones and press P to open the bone panel. In this case, activating joint compensation, joint compensation for parent, and parental muscle flexing will improve the final deformation a lot. Of course, we have to test how the controls work, and if the mesh deforms well. Now, let's take a quick look at how powerful using Stardon Modeling tool with Genoma can be. Let's move the hand on the right, and let's create a copy using the Mirror tool. Let's save the object with a new name. Now, back in layout, let's update the rig again. Now we have two hands ready for action. We just scratched the surface of how powerful Genoma can be. In the next videos, we'll learn how to deal with weight maps, how to build a rig preset from scratch using sub rigs, and how to save presets we can access anytime from the Genoma presets panel.